Hello everyone, I'd like to welcome you to today's Tech Talk AX2 2012 to Finance and Operations Apps Upgrade. My name is Evan and I'll be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this web conference through Teams Live events and the audio can be heard through your device speakers. Today's web conference is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation and by participating in the session using Microsoft Teams, your name, email address, phone number, and or title may be viewable by other session participants. If you do not consent to being part of a recorded session, please disconnect at this time. Attendees may access the web conference recording via the Tech Talks Dynamics community page within five business days. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, please use the Q&A panel located on the right side of your screen. Our presenters will be responding to your questions throughout and at the end of the event. Thank you for your patience during these announcements. Now let's get started. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Ankur Srivastava, Senior R&D Solution Architect, and Mo Alawa, Senior R&D Solution Architect. Mo, over to you. Thank you, Evan. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Fast Track TikTok for upgrading from AX 2012 to Finance and Operation apps. Our objective of this TikTok today is to give you an understanding of the end-to-end -end process for upgrading from AX 2012 to finance and operation apps, including providing you an overview of the upgrade process, uh, taking a deeper look at how do you arrive at the uh, estimation for the code upgrade activities and how do you execute that, what kind of uh, steps are required for the data upgrade execution and some of the uh, key upgrade considerations and best practices. And finally, we also want to share some of the tips and best practices for validation, signing of your code and data upgrade and be successful with a go live. Uh, although we are talking about finance and operation apps, uh, we are focused more on the Dynamics 365 finance and supply chain management. Although we will be covering the HQ part of Dynamics 365 Commerce, uh, we are not necessarily focused on the retail SDK or the point of, point of sale upgrade. We're also not covering the data migration approach or scenarios from AX 2009 or 2012. And being cautious of time, we will not be uh, going into a deep dive for uh, extensibility patterns. So in terms of the content, uh, I'll be taking you through the first half of the slides, uh, starting with the uh, upgrade availability and overview. I will, I will take you through the uh, analysis phase and how do you arrive at the uh, code and data upgrade estimation and how do you uh, come up with a project plan. I want to also share some of the key data upgrade preparations at the source system due to some of the deprecations we have done between Dynamics uh, 365 and uh, AX 2012. And then I will be handing, handing you over to Anchor to take you through the remaining agenda, starting with the execute phase and how do you run your code and data upgrade activities? How do you do the source system preparation tasks? Um, some of the uh, key troubleshooting steps for the data upgrade as you will have to go through multiple iterations. And then how do you prepare for validating uh, the code and data once they are ready for UAT? How do you prepare for cutover and for a successful go live? We want to also share some of the special considerations with you that can help you reduce the uh, upgrade and the cutover timelines. And then we have curated some key resources for you that helps you to um, share the, the knowledge on the upgrade topics. Now, since there are two of us in this call, um, I would really encourage you to start sharing your questions as we go through the slides, as while one of us is presenting for you, the other uh, architect can pick up those questions. And toward the end, if we have enough time, we will go through Q&A session as well. In terms of the availability of the upgrade journey from Dynamics AX 2012, this has been available for some time now. So for customers coming either from AX 2012 R2 or R3, they can upgrade to Finance and Operation Apps latest version or version 10. Despite that, uh, customers coming from AX 2012 RTM are not yet supported to upgrade to finance and operation apps. So there is a call of action here. If you have any customers or if you are a customer who's interested to upgrade from RTM, please reach out to us. You can even uh, reach out to us on this TikTok or, uh, or uh, later. In terms of the tooling, both code and data upgrade tooling are directly managed through uh, LCS or lifecycle services. So you will be seeing us talking a lot about LCS component with that as well. 
In terms of the overall upgrade process, you can think about it as three primary phases, right? Analyze where you are trying to come up with a project plan to understand the budgeting and the timelines for the upgrade activity. Execute where you are conducting the code and the data upgrade activities and validate where you are signing off that, uh, you know, testing and signing off and preparing for go live. So what I want to do, I want to take you through each one of these activities, each, each one of these phases that there are sub activities for each. So starting with the analyze process, uh, there are certain sub activities. The first thing is you need to get your hands, uh, uh, you need to get access to LCS, right? And there are different ways for doing that. We'll be talking about that in the next few slides. Once you have access to lifecycle services, you will need to create an upgrade project uh, by selecting the uh, upgrade methodology so that you can get access to the same kind of resources that we are sharing on the slide and the project through the methodology can drive you to a successful upgrade. The next step would be to run the upgrade analyzer, which is not, nothing but an analyzing component on your AX2012 source system that will show you some of the deprecated features and some of the key cleanup activities that will help you reduce the upgrade timelines. Then you want to go through the code upgrade tool that allows you to at the analyze phase allows you to uh, arrive at the estimation for uh, overlaying to extensions conversion and at later stage during the execution phase it will do the actual uh, uh, upgrade more from a technical formatting from the AX2012 code format to Dynamics 365 format. There will be still some work to be done by developers but it gives you the starting point. And then you would want to do fit gap analysis for some of the deprecated features that have been uh, that are known to you, to you and some of the no, uh, some of the new features that are available in 365, which might deem some of your customizations in 2012 as obsolete. And the exit criteria, the key output of this process is to get to uh, a project plan. So starting with the first step to sign up for LCS, uh, you could either sign up for a trial project, like if you have no Dynamics 365 licenses at all, you can go for a trial. Or if you are if you are already working with your partner, they can create a project for you and give you access to that. Right. The key thing is um, as soon as you have access to LCS, uh, the next step would be to create your project. When you create the project, you want to make sure that you select the right methodology. So creating project gives you an option for different methodologies. I'll show you a screenshot of that in the next um, slide, but you want to make sure that you select the um, upgrade AX2012 to finance and operation apps uh, upgrade methodology. If you pick the wrong methodology, that's something that can be changed later. During the slides, you might hear us talking about Dynamics 365 Migration Program or DMP. Uh, it's basically a program that enables on-prem customers to simplify and accelerate their move to the cloud by offering end-to-end -end migration support by working directly with advisors from our side from Microsoft and specialized migration providers. So in this case, if you are a customer or if your customer has already came through the MP offering, they would uh, already have this step completed for them, right? They will already have access to LCS project and the um, they will already have a project with the code upgrade to execute it so they can skip this step. So in terms of creating the uh, LCS project, this is how the LCS project creation experience looks like. So on the left hand side, I'm creating a project. You can give the project a name. You pick the product, finance and operation. And as you can see in the methodology, you have different methodologies either for fresh implementation or trial. And in our case, we want to make sure that we pick the upgrade methodology. Once you create your project, this is what the project looks like. And as you can see, the methodology reflects the phases that we are just uh, uh, showcasing in this presentation. And under each phase, you will, feel, you will see the same sub activities that we are describing here as well. You might be a customer who have already purchased Dynamics 365 licenses, and in that case, your journey will start from day one through what we call an implementation project, right? An implementation project is uh, something that you cannot create. It's created 
uh, for you by Microsoft, and it's basically your access to the software as service subscription. And those projects come with already a predefined list of phases. So even in that case, you can you could still uh, append the methodology and add the upgrade methodology to your phases. And once you are finished with the upgrade steps, you can uh, uh, change the methodology and remove those steps. So what I'm showing on my screen here, I've already got an uh, implementation project. So I've already started my journey with a real uh, Dynamics 365 sus subscription. Um, and you can see that I have appended those upgrade methodologies as well to my standard methodology. So that was the first step, right? We had to have access to LCS and create a project with the right methodology. Now, the third step is to run the upgrade analyzer. Uh, and as I said, the upgrade analyzer basically is a tool that runs against your AX2012 pre-prod environment. It basically identifies the uh, potential maintenance activities. When we say maintenance, basically clean up things that will help you to speed up your upgrade um, uh, activity by reducing the database size and reducing the volume of data that need to be upgraded. And it does also call out some of the key deprecated features so, so that you can know that these things need to be revisited as well. The way it works is by gathering data from your OX 2012 environment as part of the regular system diagnostic service in LCS. So it just basically runs on top of the system diagnostic service and uh, builds up analysis based on that telemetry that we're collecting from 2012. So if you have already been using system diagnostic services in the past, uh, there is nothing more to configure. But if you haven't, you have to configure that first and then you can view the results uh, or you can run the upgrade analyzer and view the results. Maybe one key tip while you are trying to configure the system diagnostic services, you might run into connectivity issues between your AX2012 and LCS. And in that case, you, will, you just want to make sure that you enable strong cryptography on your AOS machines as they need to talk to the cloud and they need to, to, to talk to it in a secured fashion. Uh, we will share the PDF of those slides and bas basically you will find that this is a link that allows you to configure .NET to uh, enable strong cri crypto cryptography. So once you have run the upgrade analyzer, you can view the results uh, as part of the system di diagnostic, which is presented as a Power BI report. To access that report, you basically have to hit this URL and just make sure to amend the URL with your own project ID. Right, project IDs are very easy to find when you open your LCS project. If you just look at the browser URL, you will find your LCS project ID as part of that URL. Let me quickly show you what the upgrade analyzer report looks like. So on the left hand side, you can see that this is the uh, Power BI report and what it's showing me is the potential database size that can be saved if I did some of the maintenance and some of the cleanup activities. And that's also broken by areas, right? So um, it's showing, for example, the one of the top data consumers for me is the master plan log. Right. If I clean that up, I could reduce almost um, um, half uh, half a uh, half a gigabyte. Um, and then there are also a number of SQL optimizations that I can apply to my SQL Server that will just make the export experience from 2012 format a bit faster, so that the migration is as efficient as possible. And it does also call out some of the deprecated features, so you can drill down into that and see what has been deprecated and and basically those items need to be revisited. So that was the um, uh, upgrade analyzer. Now let's talk about the code upgrade, right? As that's where most of the estimation efforts need to be focused. So for you to be able to run the code upgrade tool, um, basically you need to find that, right? So it's part of LCS, it's an LCS service. And what it does is a you feed it your AX2012 model store and it produces Excel reports for some of the analysis of uh, your customizations. It also upgrade the code to finance and operation apps format. Um, I just have to be uh, clear here that it doesn't necessarily convert your overlays to extensions yet, although this is something that we really want to uh, work on. But for now, it basically upgrade the code into the finance and operation format and the remaining work is actually convert those overlayers to extensions. So as you can see, it's already uh, it does convert the code and resolve uh, some of the conflicts um, and then 
uh, gives you a report for that to pick up the work from there. Um, the, the key use case for us during analysis phase is to use it to estimate the code upgrade efforts. So uh, the way you have, you know, the way to run this first thing is you need to have access to a DevOps project. You either sign up for that if you are on the customer side um, or if customers already have a DevOps project can share that with partner, then that DevOps project need to be configured with your LCS project. And from that standpoint, once that's done, you will be able to create a code upgrade job, right? While creation of the code upgrade jobs, so as you can see on my right hand, uh, side, this is a screenshot of code upgrade job creation. You will see that you have options to provide a name, which product are you upgrading from and which product you are upgrading to. The reason we ask these questions because this same tool is used to allow you to upgrade from all their versions of Dynamics 365 as well. So for you, basically, these are the key settings that you need to configure. Um, and then you have an option to either run the, run the tool with estimation only or not. The main difference between estimation only or not is the timing of the upgrade of the tool uh, execution and what does it do, right? If you say estimation only, it will only give you the analysis reports and it will be easier to or faster to run. If you untick that, it will do, uh, it will not only produce the reports, but also uh, do the uh, actual code upgrade activity for you. So it will take a bit longer. So once you've done that, you have to upload your model store, your AX2012 model store to LCS. And then uh, during execute phase, we'll be talking a little bit about how or what are the best practices, but you want to make sure that this is a valid model store. It's compilable. Uh, it should be coming from production right like not a UAT or a dev model store to make sure that it does provide you with a valid sizing of the upgrade activity. Then you run the analyze code um, uh, process and that gives you uh, output reports. So taking you to the next step, this is the com this is how LCS will show the completion of that process. And what you can see here is the process has already completed. It has already took certain time. Uh, and then I can see list of reports. The main important report is the migration summary, right? So migration summary basically shows you list of uh, over layers uh, that you have done uh, along with the conflicts that need to be resolved. And that basically will give you uh, some signal for sizing. We are working on providing more meaningful feedback in the migration summary because today think about it, it's simply trying to count how many overlayers you have done on each object, right? So if the object has 10 methods have been either changed, deleted or added, all these will be counted so that you can see which objects have been changed more. But what we want to also do is we want to add some bucketing to help you with uh, with estimating the effort. So I'll be talking about that uh, in few slides. It's basically a work in progress. It hasn't been released yet, but we will also share with you uh, a tip for how you can get that sizing until we release it. So as I said, um, the upgrade uh, tool, if estimation only is marked, uh, then it just provides those analysis uh, reports. But I also want to show you what happens if the estimation only is unmarked, right? If you are actually doing the code upgrade activity. And what happens in that case is basically the service will also upgrade your code to Dynamics 365 format and check it into DevOps. So uh, this is the screenshot of running it without the estimation only option. After you have uploaded your, uh, uploaded your model store to LC, code upgrade service, the code, both the 2012 code and the 365 upgraded code will be checked into DevOps so that you can pick it up and continue the conversion. And it will, it will also uh, generate the reports. Now I want to double click on what happens here, you know, how code is converted and how does it get checked into DevOps. So let me take you through that process uh, so that you know what does the code upgrade tool do. So when you provide your AX2012 model store, the first thing we do is we convert the metadata into the latest format, right? We convert it into XML. Back in 2012, we used the notion of model store and all code was stored in the database. Now in 365, we use something called packages folder 
under that you have metadata and you have all uh, code uh, reflected in XML files. So that's the first thing it does. The second thing is it converts objects with, res with respect to overlaying. So what happens is overlaying are stored in a special Delta folders in 365. So this tool detects all the overlayers and move that to the respective folders. The next thing is we rebaseline metadata by moving it and merging it into the right model. The reason for that is in 2012, you can think about the baseline, you know, our entire code base, Microsoft code base was sitting in one model, right? Or in one layer in CES. In 365, we moved away from that and split the code into individual packages for easier maintenance, right? So think about we have one package for tax related code, another package for source document related code and so on and so forth. So your customizations also need to be moved uh, across those packages and models. And then we run some auto migration rules so that if we can convert some of the overlays to extensions, we can do that. We only do that maybe for one object type for menus, uh, but also the main thing is uh, we try to auto merge the uh, conflicts, right? So if there are conflicts between 2012 and 365 because the code has moved in our baseline, we try to uh, uh, auto merge those if possible. And finally, we provide you with the output summary of what has been merged, what are the remaining uh, overlaying for developers to pick it up. And all this uh, code converted will be automatically checked into DevOps along with uh, work items for the remaining uh, conflict resolution work. Now, of course, that's not what you would typically do in the analysis phase, but just to give you an idea what you know, if you have run this tool, how do you, what happens, you know, what would be the next step? And that's more uh, in the execute phase. The next thing for developer is to deploy VM or number of VMs if you are working with a team of developers, as each developer will need his own VM. So you can deploy the develop the development VMs through LCS. Then you can map your VMs to DevOps so that you can pull the latest finance and operation code, and then you start the actual overlay overlaying to extension conversion. So at that point, you are more likely actually conducting the code upgrade activity. Right, so uh, if you run this without estimation only and you want to make sure that it did complete make sure that you verify and you can see the overlayed upgraded code already available in devops so uh, for example here is a screenshot from my devops project when the tool runs successfully you should find two folders under the releases folder basically one for the ax2012 uh, source code and one for the tw uh, finance and operation apps upgraded code under that you will find metadata and then you will find the, all your uh, packages uh, uh, split by the standard packaging as i said in analysis phase uh, we just use the tool to estimate the efforts so the idea with bucketing i was talking about the migration summary report right this excel report today counts the number of customizations what we want to do also we want to add some categorization to those to those customizations so that you can know you know a customization whether it's small medium or large so the bucketing that we came up with today uh, let me quickly take you through that and that will basically publish uh, through the same tool as soon as we are ready to release it. So there is nothing uh, additional you need to do from your side. You will just be consuming the same tool, same reports. It will just add one more column. So in terms of bucketing, the bucketing we have defined is uh, the first one is small, right where extension is possible. Uh, think about this as a simple scenario of adding field to an existing table or adding a new method, right? These are small changes and usually think about them taking like minutes. For medium, it's basically something that can be converted to extensions, but traversal is required. If uh, traversal is is required, and you might find that you will need to raise an extension request. I'll give you a quick example. Say, for example, you have overlayered the method, right? If your changes are at the top or at the bottom of that method, that can easily be converted to uh, a chain of command. Uh, but if you are ch if your changes are in the middle and there is no hookable point to uh, extend, then basically you will have to raise an extension request. So medium usually think about it in terms of hours and large typically you think about it in terms of, day, of, of days. So large uh, where we categorize all the SSRS report elements, uh, we define them as large. And the reason for that is the extension story for SSRS reports is basically by duplicating reports and creating your own copies, right? So that takes uh, some time. 
We also have two additional uh, buckets. The first one is not in scope. Basically, this is where an extension is not possible anymore, right? Think about you have overlayer than enum in 2012 that is not extensible in 365 anymore, or maybe you have introduced a intrusive customization by changing a table type from company specific to global, right? These kind of uh, intrusive customizations are not allowed. And TBD is basically uh, where we can categorize it. That's something that needs to be uh, 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 evaluated manually to define the bucket size. Now for now, until we release this, if you have uh, if you are a customer or if you have a customer who needs to get access to this bucketing, uh, you can reach out to Dynamics 365 migration program. Uh, so I've, I'm also sharing a link here that allows you to uh, nominate your customer to get similar assessment done. For customers coming from DMP, you would have already received that as part of the standard migration assessment. Right, so we were talking about extensibility requests, right? Um, as I said, in finance and operation, uh, over layerings are not allowed anymore, right? And extensions is the only way to customize the, the product. So we'll find that uh, some of the over overlayer, layering customizations are not possible through extensions anymore. If you if you have a genuine and valid business business requirements that you would still want to achieve without over layering, uh, we have already added lots of extension capabilities for you and we are adding uh, many more going forward. So if you have if you have found that you are missing a gen or a valid extension point, you can raise uh, an extension request through LCS. But before that, just make sure that before raising your first extension request, make sure that you go through the extension steps uh, blog post, this blog post. As we talk a lot about what uh, deemed as good extension and allowed extension and what extensions are not allowed or will be automatically rejected, right? So you want to make sure that you go through this to make sure that your extension request uh, is not uh, rejected at first point. Right, so during estimation, if you have any third party solutions or ISV solutions, just make sure to ignore the uh, output from the reporting for that um, as you know, ISVs can be uh, should not be part of the or should not be manually upgraded. You basically have to contact the third parties for newer versions of those components. All right, so talking about fit gap analysis, what you need to do during fit gap analysis, the first thing is you need to, to have access to a finance and operation environment, right? And you can do that through LCS where you can deploy a sandbox environment. We have two options, either if you are on LCS trial or preview project, you can deploy a demo environment on your own Azure subscription. The only thing you have to do is you have to set up or link your um, Azure subscription with LCS by setting up the Microsoft Azure connector. If you are already, uh, if you have already purchased Dynamics licenses, you will already get two uh, uh, non-production environments as part of the standard offering. So you simply just need to deploy one of them, right? You perform the fit gap analysis, not only around uh, duplicated features, Features, right to know how do you want to redesign for those, but also around the new Dynamics capabilities that might render some of your legacy customizations as obsolete and will help you to uh, refactor some of those elements. All right, so in terms of upgrade versus mi migrate, um, maybe just going to give you a quick overview for what's possible today. So for the upgrade, basically um, it's a we offer a process that runs through the data upgrade tool, which is generally available. It provides a way to move the data completely. You know, your entire database can be upgraded from 2012 format to 365. It doesn't allow you to slice and dice. So we, we hear some requirements where customers want to upgrade like some legal entities while leaving other legal entities in 2012 or upgrade some partitions and leaving the other partitions. None of that support. It's either all or nothing. So that's typically um, the best uh, option when you have more of a lift and shift exercise. Then we have the migration option, right? And in that you can think about it just like if you are migrating from any legacy or external system. So you use data management framework on the 365 side to import the data. You use DIXF on the 2012 side to export the data, right? And you will be mainly migrating reference master and open documents uh, from your legacy system, right? And this is more useful when you are thinking about re-implementation because lots of restructuring of maybe your data structure or your business processes. So that's where migration is more appropriate. 
Right, I want to take you through some of the key considerations uh, when you are up from a data upgrade perspective, right? Uh, as there are some differences between 2012 and 365, I want to highlight some of those differences. I will be I will be talking about four points. Uh, I'll start with the collation. So if you remember back in 2012, we did support various database collations and there wasn't some kind of a hard requirement except for the database to follow the SQL Server collation, right? And you could have checked your X database collection collation by running this command. And basically the difference in finance and operation, we only support a single database collation now, which is written here, right? So if you check your database collation and it doesn't match this one, you basically have to go through this process. And this process is allows you to change the database collation by creating a copy or a duplicate database of the uh, required collation. The full process is already published on Yammer. Uh, here as per this link and basically the steps, the very high level steps is basically you take a backup of your database into Dynamics 365 environment. You export that backup file into something called backpack format. Backpack is nothing but a zip file. You rename it, unzip it, and then you take a model.xml file which contains all this metadata about collations. You edit it in any text editor and then you can re-import the database back with the right collation and that will produce a duplicate of your database with the expected collation settings. The next, the next consideration is more around attachments. So AX2012 offered the two options for storing attachments either in database or file shares. Finance and operation offers a blob storage for storing those attachments as a replacement, right? So the reason file share is no longer supported because as finance and operation lives in the cloud, it doesn't have a way to communicate with your local file share. Uh, and database storage has been deprecated uh, in favor of the Azure blob storage both from uh, storage, you know, cost, the storage of the cost and the performance capability. So if you, uh, you need, the key consideration here basically is that you need to move attachments to blob storage. If you have been using the file shares, the first step is basically you have to move the document from the file share into your database, into your 2012 database. Uh, we have already shared the GitHub script here. And uh, once the documents are in the database, there is a post upgrade uh, migration option that can allow you to move the files from your database back to the blob storage. So that's also documented in docs here. The third consideration is virtual companies. Uh, again, 2012 offered the virtual company feature that allowed you to share tables with a set of companies. Uh, finance and operation offers an alternative to that. It's called cross company data sharing. So because virtual company feature is no longer supported, uh, there is also uh, another trick that people used to do in 2012. Instead of using virtual companies, we've seen customers changing the tables from company specific to global by just changing the save data bear company property. That is also not allowed through extensions anymore, right? So that uh, that leaves you with a cross company data sharing option. So cross company data sharing runs by replicating data, which is the key difference from the virtual company, right? So the data is physically copied across the uh, uh, companies rather than shared in one or stored in one company and virtually shared with, uh, with the rest of the companies. And because of that, it doesn't offer full parity with the with the virtual company feature, right? We have already documented limitations, so you can click on that link and see all those limitations, mainly things that you need to consider while designing this around which data can be shared, you know, the maximum number of volumes and the maximum uh, number of uh, companies that can be shared as well. And also, if you are working with a customer who have used virtual companies or a table that was company specific that they made it global, then there is a consideration from a data uh, upgrade script perspective, right? So what you need to do is basically you need to create a data upgrade script that moves the data into a specific company before you can configure the cross company data sharing. So you will, when you get the slides, you will see this. We are also sharing an appendix of a sample script that helps you to go through that. And maybe last but not least, the data partition. So what we do, what we offer here is basically in 2012, we introduced the data partitions as part of R2 to enable data isolation. Uh, in finance and operation, we use uh, we use the database as the isolation as the isolation container as a replacement, right? So data partitions are not available anymore. And if you have used them because 
data uh, level, database level separation was a critical issue, you might want to think about using uh, multiple instances of finance and operation. So think about each partition as a separate instance of finance and operation. And as we say, the last step of the analyze phase is coming up with the project plan, right? So we already provide you with a template. As you can see it on the right hand side, that's all that's already provided through the LCS methodology. And that's why it's very important to pick the right methodology while you create the project. And you will need to uh, use outputs or signals from the various activities that we covered. So you need to, to take the signals from the migration summary and bucketing. You want to make sure that you pick a sample of each of the buckets uh, and maybe try to upgrade a few of those objects to arrive at acceptable estimation for the extension conversion that suits your team. The other signal you can take is the uh, output from upgrade analyzer that will give you the amount of time required to prepare your AX2012 environment. And the final input you can take is the sandbox environment fit gap analysis, right? That will show you how many new customizations that might be needed. Maybe just a few, uh, two more tips in terms of planning. Make sure you keep some uh, buffer for the compilation time as upgrade is not only code conversion. Once you confer, convert all the code, you will find that you will need some more time to make the code compilable. The second thing you want to consider is not only over layers need to be worked on, also, uh, even if you have created some net new objects back in 2012, those might need to be touched in 365 because they have dependencies on some changed or deprecated logic. So with that, you should be done with the analysis and ready to go for the execute phase. And I will be handing you over to Anchor. Anchor, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mo. So we are in the execute phase now, and we uh, basically Yeah, so yeah, so execute phase. So now we have completed our analysis and ready with execute phase, which is nothing but executing upgrade activity. During the execution phase, you work through the task that you plan during the analyze phase. So always keep a note that your source system is AX2012 and target system is finance and operation apps. In this whole activity, main steps are complete code upgrade activity at target end, source system preparation task for data upgrade activity, run pre-upgrade checklist on source system for data upgrade, export and import database to target system, and then execute the data upgrade. First step in execute phase is to switch to the LCS implementation project. The public preview project that you used for the analyze phase has served its purpose. You can now discard it. For the remaining steps, you require only the project plan that you created in the final steps of the analyze phase. When you purchase a subscription, you will receive details about how to sign up for a new LCS project. This project is known as an implementation project and will be the new permanent LCS project for your subscription. For as long as you have that subscription, now this project differs from the public preview project in that it's managed by Microsoft. Therefore, this project has the uh, like these characteristics. All environment in the project are hosted in Azure. The Azure subscription that is associated with this with the project is managed by Microsoft. Therefore, there is no separate billing for Azure cost. The costs are covered by your subscription. The production environment in the project is maintained by Microsoft. Therefore, code deployments, upgrades, and infrastructure maintenance are run directly by Microsoft, not by customer or partner staff. Now, second step in LCS project onboarding. Uh, as we all know that LCS is an administration portal with multiple purposes. It's a collaborative workspace to manage entire project lifecycle, starting from onboarding to the service. Now the question comes, why we are starting with LCS project onboarding while talking about upgrade from EX2012? And the answer is, while on the project onboarding wizard, in the project scope section, you can use the legacy system field to identify the project as an EX2012 upgrade. It's crucial that you identify the project in, the, in this way. So 
that the sandbox infrastructure that is deployed is compatible with the upgrade process that is out outlined here. If the system isn't completed early in the project, you might accidentally deploy your sandbox on a new infrastructure, which is with this part and database, and that is incompatible with the X2012 upgrade process. In that case, the upgrade effort might be delayed. Third step is to perform code upgrade activity. You need development environment to complete this activity. And so, Complete the tasks that were planned during the code upgrade estimation step of the analyze phase. From this point onward, code changes in EX2012 should be frozen. Only emergency code changes should be allowed in EX2012. If a change is made, it must be ported manually to the new code base. Owner of the intellectual property should own the DevOps account. During code upgrade, consider proper branching in DevOps related to dev, main, and release. Draft and always follow naming convention during converting code from overlaying to extension. Customers should get new version of ISV solutions from their respective ISV partners. We have seen that it takes time while customer approaches to respective ISV. So quicker in the long run to get FNO versions of ISVs before upgrading custom code will help customer making good progress. Developers need to refactor customization overlaying to extensions in our engagement, we took below approaches. Start with platform model, that then foundation, and continue upwards because they reference each other. Start with database schema objects like EDT, enums, table, views, then move to the other set of objects, class, forms, query, menu items, menus, report. Most importantly, start working on the data upgrade as early as possible by separating database schema related things in the code upgrade from the rest and start working on the data upgrade in parallel. While working on each object during converting them to extension, complete it fully. While converting objects to extension based on complexity of changes, either customer can use FNO compare tool or they can use the AX2012 compare tool to identify their customization. Redesign deprecated features like AIF and integration, analytics, enterprise portal, etc. This takes time for customer to understand design and implement, so how quickly they start, it helps. Complete code upgrade and compile your extension package. Do not use Visual Studio to create deployable packages. Push your latest compiled code to a clean branch and configure DevOps, build pipelines against the clean branch to produce all-in-one deployable packages. During code upgrade activity, a very important step where we need to make sure that we are covering data upgrade scripts if needed. Upgrade scripts are run as part of the data upgrade process to upgrade data from source AX2012 database to FNO database. So let's talk about it. There are two kinds of data upgrade scripts are there, major version data upgrade script and minor version. Major version is for AX2012 to V65 V10 latest, and minor version is for AX7 to T365 V10 latest. In general, we need to write an upgrade script when a breaking schema change is introduced and breaking schema like new unique index was added, enum value changed, table field deleted. And in another in, another, in other scenario where you need to write a script is a new feature is added that requires data to be populated so that the feature can be used. In case there is corrupted data and needs to be cleaned up you need to write the you you can include for the same in your code script code so please look into this appendix as i have kept more details and example which will help understanding writing a script here is an example how you can write a script class extending release update db class in your custom package which will be executed during upgrade run Here you can see the details about different upgrade scripts attributes. These attributes basically describe about different stages, script types, and script dependencies. Coming from AX2012, it's major upgrade, and main stages are pre-sync and post-sync. Different script types are shared script, standard script, and partition script. In last, script dependencies are to ensure a script runs after another script with different condition. So these attributes will be used when you are writing a script 
for your uh, customization where exactly you are looking for moving your data uh, and you are seeing that okay the script is needed for moving the database in 365 and there is a schema chain i have added a few example for reference where the script is needed or if a script are not in place then there will be a data loss let's talk about the first example where compared to x2012 we added a unique index on pm schedule line table in fnu so to write a script logic needed in pressing to disable unique index here uh, which will ensure no data loss with first database synchronization later update pm schedule line table in post sync by massaging data with new unique index and that is something you can see in the below code in this another example where in x2012 as part of customization customer changed table property save data per company to no we know today in extension world we can't change save data per company table property so in database coming from x2012 due to customization there will be no data area d on table but with respect to fno during first database synchronization in upgrade run data area id will be defaulted with that company so in posting process move data to one com customer company and then use cross company data sharing feature this is what the same thing was explained by mo in the virtual company concept so we need to write a script which will make sure that okay we are we are uh, we are going with the new feature in fno by you know by uh, by doing uh, by by writing the script basically so one more example where a new feature is added that requires data to be populated so that the feature can be used in fno in fno apps there is a new field field id added in doc value table we have a post sync script for populating the field column with a unique grid on each row so this is something again like we want to uh, that the requirement was there that you know you need to populate the data in new field that is something we can also write the post sync script and we can you know bring the whole logic in the posting script process so that you know it will be like after the upgrade the data will be there in the new field which which was you know which was um, created as part of your process now by making progress in code upgrade you need to start preparing database at source system for data upgrade activity so in analyze phase you ran upgrade analyzer tool which has identified identified potential maintenance activities and suggest sql configuration optimization that can help speed up the upgrade process so bring the, those recommendation in source system in case collation change is needed then this activity can be done during importing backpack database on target system as explained in the analyze phase use the pre upgrade checklist to enter data that will be required for the upgrade procedure let's talk about very important step for data upgrade installing and executing pre upgrade checklist on source system we have different hot fixes for x2012 r2 and r3 and here you can see the link in the first part question comes why it is needed we all know that in x2012 r2 and r3 we were having two database concept business da database and the model database but in fno we have only single database we will bring business database from x2012 for the upgrade activity so we need few important details to move from model database to business database so with this pre upgrade checklist we are doing that activity with different customer we have seen missing this step and facing a lot of issues in the upgrade activity so it is very important step main steps in the checklist are validate baseline version prepare model metadata prepare security role metadata set up user mapping and archive retail salt data while executing these steps in checklist wait for it to finish and then mark as complete for your references for executing data upgrade we need to use data upgrade deployable package so let's understand about data upgrade deployable package data upgrade deployable package is managed through lcs to get the latest data upgrade deployable package for a target environment that is running the latest fno update download the latest binary updates from lcs shared asset library naming convention used in lcs is ax2012 data upgrade dash 10 dash 0 dash x x will be the version where you will be upgrading and it will be the latest one while running data upgrade manually we have seen issues related to block of this deployable package file so after you download the zip file right click it 
and then select properties and then select unblock to unlock the files. Data upgrade deployable package consists of AX update installer and runbook. If you are upgrading a database on a development or sandbox environment, you can instead execute the data upgrade package directly from the LCS environment page using the maintain and apply update servicing functionality. This option was not available for sandbox environment earlier, but recently it has been incorporated. Below you can find the link for that, the, this new feature. On development environment, prefer way is to execute the package manually from the command line via remote desktop on the AOS VM as we need to rerun upgrade and troubleshooting will be easy. Once you decide to execute data upgrade deployable package manually through the command line, then you need to consider the steps which will help executing deployable package manually. First important step is to open command prompt window as an ad administrator. Here are steps on high level with commands to execute, starting from collecting topology configuration data to update default topology data file, then generate a runbook from the same topology and then import the runbook. Then in the last execute the runbook, this is going to execute all steps mentioned in the runbook. Data upgrade package has various steps, which includes like pre-rec, pre-sync, database sync, post-sync, final database sync, and stopping and starting various services and many more. Let's talk about the important one, which actually are responsible for doing the data upgrade. So the first one is the pre-rec, preparing source database for upgrade process, pre-sync and post-sync. So a lot of new changes happen in metadata with respect to X2012 to V10X as part of the standard changes. Changes could be anything like made a field obsolete, bring a unique index on table, populating default values to any new config tables, any uh, enum element changes, etc. So in these cases, we need scripts in place to handle these specific changes. These scripts are part of a standard package and you can find same in application as release update DB star classes. These scripts run as part of the pre-sync and post-sync steps. Database sync and final database sync. Database sync is the process of synchronizing the AX metadata tables, views and entities of V10X version into the SQL database of AX2012 metadata. So it uses SQL dictionary tables in the database to track the state of the metadata as persisted in the DB and compares it with the new metadata that is being deployed. When changes are detected, modification are made to the SQL in order to bring the DB in sync with the metadata. We might need to disable index as part of the pre-sync. We will be running first database sync keeping same in context. So if you remember the example which I show, uh, which I have shown you in the first uh, uh, writing the script, we are basically what we are doing, we are disabling the index. So that will be running as part of the pre-sync process and later we will have the first database synchronization. So what it will do, it will just, uh, so the database knows that, okay, something has been disabled. So what it will do, it will just retain the data and it will not do anything on to that particular table or with respect to that index. Then what you have to do because you know when we are doing the pre-sync activity, we are just disabling the index. In the post-sync, we are massaging the data. And what we are doing, so if we have to massage the data, that is something we are going to do as part of the post-sync process. Now, after the post-sync process, there will be a final database sync. And that time, this uh, like this, the whatever we have uh, um, disabled in the pre-sync, it will get enabled and because we have already massaged the data in post-sync, the final DB sync will take care of everything and there will be no sync issues. As you are executing data upgrade package manually, then in case of any failure during upgrade run, let's talk about troubleshooting steps which will help in fixing issues and making progress. In case there is any failure in any step, once you fix the run uh, the error, then command to rerun the runbook. So in case of failure, you can rerun the steps. If there is any failure in pre-sync or post-sync step, then all errors details are logged in release update script error log table. During pre-sync or post-sync, if there is any error, then there is an option where you can skip failed script. But few things to keep in mind. 
this process is intended to be used only in a development scenario you can skip all the scripts that have failed a specific number of times and move to the next viable script this functionality helps with the troubleshooting process by design the process is very manual so that you are less likely to unintentionally skip a script so that is something just you need to make sure that you are defining this process in development scenario in the first or second run later you should not use this skip fail script uh, skip fail script part in few scenarios if you want to monitor the duration of a script that ran then release update scripts log table has details in this duration minutes column also to track progress or failure events are logged in system pre sync or post sync related details are in ax data upgrade event and database synchronization event details are logged under ax database synchronization event so this will this will for sure it will help you in terms of you know if you want to see if you want to track progress or if you want to see, see the failure let's talk about data upgrade in development and sandbox environment this first upgrade occurs in a development environment so that you can more easily debug any issues that are found at this stage this environment uses sql server and support back file format in development environment any issue can be debugged immediately code can be adjusted and the upgrade can be rerun within minutes however larger sandbox environment don't allow for this level of agility this environment uses azure sql and support backpack file format in those environments a minimum of several hours will be required to debug and remediate issues update code deploy the updated code and rerun the upgrade so the recommendation here that if you are planning to rerun the upgrade activity and there are some troubleshooting activities are there please make sure you are following you are you are working on the development environment data upgrade in development environment so cloud hosted or development environment uses microsoft sql server this process need back file to be import on cloud hosted development environment so backup your x2012 database as back file format upload the data backup to azure storage download and restore the backup to the development environment and now in the last you can run the data upgrade deployable package either you can execute the package manually as i explained earlier or you can execute the package through lcs data upgrade in sandbox environment so our sandbox environment uses microsoft azure sql database for data storage this process needs backpack file to be import on sandbox environment so the first thing is when you are going for sandbox environment upgrade turn off the ax2012 as instance create a copy of ax2012 database run the t sql script to prepare the database and this is important if your ax2012 r2 or r3 application was upgraded from ax2012 rtm this script prepares the database by removing users removing procedures related to the ax2012 rtm model store cleaning up schemas dropping views and dropping references to tempting after that you need to export the copied database to a backpack file by using a sql package tool upload the backpack file to azure storage or the asset uh, lcs asset library import the backpack file into the sql database run the following script against the imported database the script performs following actions like recreate database user set the correct performance parameter enables the sql query store feature after that in the last you need you need to run the appropriate data upgrade package against the imported database through lcs on the sandbox environment validate phase when you enter the validate phase you will have the upgraded environment which has upgraded code and data this phase describes the process of validating and testing that the upgrade upgraded environment works as expected it also describes the process of preparing for go live so once done with finishing upgrade few smoke testing patterns like did all the services start or all application component accessible number of records in important tables is the expected data there and many more you you can make sure to verify final steps here perform cutover testing and create a cutover plan so you are preparing a plan for actual go live which we will call as cutover plan so before executing actual cutover plan 
uh, we need to make sure we test this cutover plan. So the term cutover is used here to describe the final process of putting the new system live. This process consists of the task that occurs after X2012 is turned off and before FNO is turned on. The goal of the testing or mock cutover is to practice the cutover process. In this way, you can help guarantee that everyone who is involved in the actual cutover to go live will have a smooth experience. There are two main stream here, which one is the technical work stream and the functional uh, work stream. Your business, so technical work stream is nothing but your business will enforce a limit on the amount of downtime that is allowed. So you need to make sure that data upgrade process is aligned with that downtime. Functional work stream. So after data upgrade, several configuration tasks will be required in the FNO environment. All these tasks must be documented and quantified and a resource must be assigned to them because they must fit together with the technical task within the business downtime limit. Next is uh, so functional test pass. So complete a full functional test pass of all business process. This test pass will be ext extensive retest of all business processes that involve FNO. These business processes include both old process that were brought forward from H 2012 to the new processes. And the new processes that involves new features that were taken up for the first time in FNO. Next, we will talk about the prepare for go live. As the go live date approaches, it's important that you implement these series of steps to help ensure that the source AX2012 system and the upgrade process both remain stable and consistent for go live. Code freeze. All code changes in the AX2012 environment should be frozen and recommendation here to implement an escalation process to handle any critical issues that appears in AX2012. By default, any new code changes that are required should be implemented only in the new system, not in the X2012 environment. And if the if any blocker, discuss with your management and make a plan to tackle that issue. Application configuration freeze. So uh, uh, all application configuration changes should be frozen in the X2012 environment because these changes could affect how the new system behaves or how the data upgrade scripts behave. Configuration changes are typically controlled by the AX2012 system administrator or a small group of trusted super user. We don't recommend that you enforce the freeze by changing security access. Instead, implement the freeze through a business process that is communicated to those users. Running the final cutover test. After no further code or setup changes will occur, run a final cutover test to make sure that all data and code upgrade tasks is still run as expected. Make sure that functional testing is performed against the last upgraded copy. Fix all blocking issues found during upgrade activity. Here, this is the slide about a go live phase where we are talking about that you need to turn off the X2012 AOS in, in go live phase and then back up your X2012 DP and run T-SQL against original. And after that, you need to export to backpack, upload to AOS machine, and then import the backpack to the sandbox environment you need to run execute data upgrade. There is one more step will be added as part in the as part of the go live phase is copy database to production. So you have run your data upgrade on sandbox environment. Now one more step is where you need to request for moving your database from your uh, sandbox to production. And after that, once it is on production, you can perform a smoke testing, complete application setup and allow user back in and then you can go live. Now let's talk about few special consideration. The first one is the transaction application and it is for basically large database. Let's take an example. If you have a larger, larger than 300 GB database, you want you should uh, you will want to explore uh, the option of using transaction replication to your own SQL Azure subscription. Data is copied in real time from the primary server, which is known as publisher to the receiving database, which is known as the subscriber. The transaction application offers an excellent backup for frequent da daily database changes. So if you want more details, please follow the below links for this transaction, uh, transaction application basically. Cut over time. 
you should break down your overall upgrade to determine where you have to spend the extra time and resources. Your dress, dress rehearsal is your mock and that should be used to make minor tweaks and to determine the overall time with a detailed breakdown of the pre-upgrade, upgrade and post-upgrade step necessary for your switchover. In Docsite, we will see two terms like cutover testing, which is nothing but the mock cutover and cutover go live. Data upgrade timing. Data upgrade timings on tier one environment or tier two environments varies based on database to database level as every database is unique and different from others. So if you are trying to predict actual data upgrade during cutover planning, then possible prediction can be done once you success successfully complete data upgrade on tier one and tier two environment based on your volume and also in actual production upgrade run take extra 20 to 30 percent buffer time what it took in tier two environment. So. Um, um, let's so I'm finishing my session here and uh, thanks everyone. Um, well, uh, so. Uh, we I, I think we are over time. So I will hand over it to Ivan for concluding and then we can we can take up the question offline. Perfect. Thank you, Ankur. Uh, we would like to get your feedback on uh, today's session. I've posted a link to a short survey in the Q&A panel. We value your feedback and welcome your input on how we did today and what you would like to see in future sessions. The survey scores on a scale from one to five, with five being the highest score possible, and we thank you for your participation. Attendees can access the web conference recording via the Tech Talks Dynamics community page within five business days post event. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenters and a thank you to our audience for logging in and joining us today. Please stay safe and have a great day or evening wherever you are. Goodbye. And we are clear.